I'm Judy Shaw for NYSE Floor Talk, and I'm here at NYSE Pacific. Joining me today is Daniel Perez. He is co-founder and CEO at Hinge Health. <laughs> Daniel, it's wonderful to have you here. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Thank you. So now, Daniel, let's start off by talking about Hinge Health. Tell me about the company and what do you do and what areas of healthcare are you looking to address? Great question. So Hinge Health, um, we're, we're a company that's tackling uh, back, joint, and muscle conditions. And so it's actually about 50% of Americans will have a back, uh, back pain or, or muscle pain or, or a joint, joint pain in any given year. It can range from a sprained ankle to knee arthritis to a, you know, something more serious like an ACL tear. So it impacts a lot of us. And for employers and health plans, it is their number one healthcare cost item is musculoskeletal conditions. So at Hinge Health, what we've done is we've tried to go upstream to, de to deliver um, uh, non-surgical care and non-opiate care for people with musculoskeletal conditions. In particular, we use technology um, to digitize physical therapy. So we use AI and the front-facing camera on your phone so to, so, uh, to help you uh, get your physical therapy delivered right from the comfort of your own home. So you don't have to go to a physical therapist office. You don't have to sit in traffic or pay a copay or hire a babysitter. You can do all your physical therapy sessions right from the comfort of your own home. And we also pair you with physical therapists, health coaches, doctors, and nurses. A full clinical care team surrounds each of our members. And for those who have breakthrough pain, we've also developed a, a proprietary electrical nerve stimulation technology uh, that you could wear anywhere on your body and we've shown could reduce your pain by about 50%. So put that together, um, we're able to actually avoid over 50% of surgeries for people who go through our program. And now we're trusted by about 1,500 employers and health plans around the US. Um, about four and five employers who've selected a digital musculoskeletal solution have selected us are about five times bigger than anybody else in our space. Okay. All right. So it seems like you are passionate about applying technology to transform healthcare. Um, can you speak about technology's role in improving the healthcare system? Well, look, what's might come as a surprise to some people is, I actually don't think technology has reduced costs in healthcare as much as it should. If you actually look at other areas or other industries, like you know consumer electronics or even uh, the car industry, technology consistently makes the products better and relatively cheaper. Um, if you walk into a hospital, there's a bunch of technology. Everything's beeping, a bunch of lights are going off, um, patients are connected with all these you know gizmos and gadgets or, or, and sensors are on them, but technology hasn't meaningfully reduced costs in healthcare. In fact, in healthcare, technology is often used as an excuse to raise prices. You know, that, that fancy new MRI machine with 2x the resolution, it's a good reason to charge just a little bit more for, for each of the scans coming out of this MRI machine, despite the fact that maybe the evidence doesn't show that that increased resolution actually improves outcomes. And so what we see is that healthcare costs continue to go up despite technology being everywhere in healthcare. And there's a few reasons, I think, for that. One is our reimbursement regime is actually quite rigid. We have what's called CPT codes that tell providers what they could bill for. Um, and it's very, very rigid. It's made by well-intentioned bureaucrats um, to make sure that there isn't healthcare fraud and we're identifying what's being billed for. But it means you can only really bill for things that pre-exist. So it incentivizes sustaining innovation, not a breakthrough innovation, because there's no code for how you could bill something new. Um, second bit is a lot of healthcare is, is manual and there's unstructured tasks. And that's hard to automate. And so it's hard for technology to automate unstructured physical tasks. Not impossible, but it's been harder to automate in healthcare. And, for, and those two reasons has, have resulted in technology not quite reducing costs in healthcare as much as they should. At Hinge Health, what we're doing, we're trying to reimagine new reimbursement schemes. Um, so going directly to employers and health plans um, to find you know, new ways of getting paid. Um, and secondly, we are actually investing uh, heavily to, to weave in-person care uh, directly with our technology. Um, in fact, we launched House Calls earlier this year, and we think that it really helps address some of the gaps of in, in technology's inability to deliver the full um, experience of healthcare. All right, well, you have a birthday coming up in October. We do. Nine years old, Hinge Health is celebrating. Um, so tell me, what's next and what are your plans for continued growth? Great, yep, we're gonna turn nine years old. We were actually founded in London and we moved to, to the US about two years later. So we've been in the US for most of our lives here in San Francisco. For Hinge Health, for the next several years, we are absolutely focused on musculoskeletal conditions. It is a huge cost driver in the US healthcare system. You know, maybe half a trillion dollars a year of direct medical spend, hundreds of billions more in lost productivity. It's a hard problem. And 
so we're going to stay focused on musculoskeletal because in order to solve this hard problem, we're going to have to stay focused on it. And I think there's going to be a, a big reward at the end of this rainbow if we could if we could make meaningful progress in musculoskeletal conditions. So that's the first thing. We are staying focused on musculoskeletal conditions. Secondly, we are leaning heavily into AI, um, not just to reimagine new care experiences, particularly reimagining the the experience of physical therapy and non-surgical, non-opiate care for musculoskeletal conditions, but also how we could use AI to empower our care teams, empower our physical therapists, our doctors, our nurses, our health coaches who are interacting with our members every single day. So we're really excited about that. And third thing that we're really excited to invest in is hybrid care. We generally believe that the future of healthcare isn't in-person or digital, it's a mix between the two. There are some things that software and connected hardware cannot deliver, and there are some things that software and connected hardware deliver much, much better than in-person care. And too often today, you're either an in-person care provider or you're just a digital care provider. We think you should just see yourself as a care provider using the, the best means necessary to move outcomes. And that's, that's something that Hinge Health is investing heavily into. All right, and finally, you're co-founder of the company. Tell me, what sparked you to start the company? Well, that's a great question. I was actually overseas in the UK at the time when I when I founded the company with my co-founder, and actually I actually have a background in musculoskeletal conditions. I broke my arm and my leg when I was younger in a biking accident. I had about 12 months of rehab. Um, I then went to do my PhD in the UK. I met my co-founder. He had also had an MSK injury. He tore his ACL, also had 12 months of rehab, was also then pursuing his PhD in the medical sciences, specifically in musculoskeletal health. And we thought to ourselves, wow, there is great evidence out there for what non-surgical, non-opiate care is in musculoskeletal conditions, only it doesn't get delivered. Too often people get shunted quickly, or quickly to a drug or quickly into surgery. Surgery pays the providers a lot more. Um, a drug is sometimes easier to prescribe, but it, what's harder is continuously going to physical therapy. You know, it doesn't actually reimburse as high. We thought, okay, could we use technology to better deliver the evidence base? And then could we use technology to go beyond the evidence base, to redefine the evidence base? And we've been pushing it's an open door for the past nine years, and it's been a great experience. All right. Well, Daniel, wonderful to talk with you. Thanks for joining me on Floor Talk today. Thank you so much, Judy.